Tonight on Oxygen Tango Live, a single preview, Franco Del Nuevo. Next. <laughs> Megan, how are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Doing fine. Doing fine. Welcome to Oxygen and Tango Live. Um, I really like your hat. This is the first appearance of, of your hat on the stream. Thanks. I bought it to support. Uh, K I look at the acronym KYCC, Nyons Organization. Very nice. It also seems like you really figured out something with your lighting and your blur. It's there's death. Yes. There's uh, I just hope I, I get there someday. I worked on it today. I refused to have worse lighting than you. I want better lighting than you have, honestly. Well, you you've achieved it. <laughs> You're two weeks ahead of me, as they say. Um, a couple of quick announcements before we get into our guest. Um, we have actually a scheduling conflict tomorrow, so we will not be streaming tomorrow. Our next stream will be Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can watch out for that. Um, will Worthington in the chat is saying he lost the signal. Did anyone else lose the signal on YouTube, or is it still going for you, Megan? Um, it's looking like it's spinning out a little bit. I think if we just wait a little bit, we'll be back up in no time. Right, we'll keep going. Okay. Let's hope for the best. Um... We also just to remind people that the stream does occasionally cut off. Uh, sometimes the internet goes out, sometimes it's more often my own incompetence. If that happens, just uh, <laughs> return to YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we should be up very soon, hopefully in the same stream that we were in before. Occasionally you'll have to go to the video page and, and look for the replacement stream. But that's been happening less and less. We're getting there. Also, just want to and it does look like the stream has come back on. I think it's still buffering. It often improves uh, the later we get into the stream. So everybody just hang in there and it should smooth itself out. Great. Also, just want to remind you that we are on Facebook and YouTube. The most robust chatting seems to usually be going on in YouTube. So you'll want to uh, head over to youtube.com slash oxygen tango um, if you want to interact with everyone else in the chat and know that the, the chat that we're quoting during the show. Finally, remind you all, if you'd like to appear on a future uh, episode of Oxygen Tango Live, all you have to do is write us at connect at oxygentango.com. We are interested in talking to tango dancers all over the world at any level during this time, so just don't hesitate. We haven't turned anyone down yet. 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 Maybe you'll be the first. Without further ado, we're going to bring on Mr. Franco Del Nuevo. There he is. Franco, how are you, sir? I am well. How are you, David? How are you, Megan? Really good. Good, good. Franco oh. Del Nuevo, every time I hear your name in my head, it sounds like a sports announcer. It goes, Franco Del Nuevo. <laughs> I love it. Huh? No, the, the good thing about my name is that Anytime a woman says it, she has to do those pouty lips. It's Franco Del Nuevo. You know, you got to get that. that, that I see. What does a man do when he does it? Oh, I um, <laughs> I usually run in fear. <laughs> uh, that uh, so Frank I'll never see that part the same way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Franco, you came into our lives, I want to say, maybe three or four months ago. We started seeing you on Saturdays at the 50, 50 Milanga. Um, you became um, a big supporter uh, on social media, a prolific poster. Um, uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, how, long, how long have you been dancing tango? <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, and I just want to say uh, thank you, Dave and Megan, for having me on. This was a, a complete surprise. Uh, I didn't think anybody would really want to know anything about that funky guy who walks in with the weird shoes. But <laughs> oh, they want to know. Well, they want to know it all. <laughs> well, then this will be the uh, highlight of our day. See, highlight, highlight, that's uh, <laughs> amazing. Wow, you have, you have props, you have props for, for everything the that you say. That's incredible. 
um, so to answer you know your question, I like about Nick, you, you, you always say that the, the, to you, the glass is always half full. Well, it, it's, absolutely. I don't see that you can see it any other way. And plus, I drink out of cans, so I can't actually see how full it is. So I'm, I'm going with half full. Uh, oh, Megan, I guess you can't see. Oh, neither of you can see the stream, actually. I, I put a, a half full glass in, into the screen, but I forgot you guys couldn't actually see it. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Look how far we've come. I love it. <laughs> So, yeah, I, uh, uh, to answer your question, kind of where did I come from, uh, a lot of people think that I, I fell from the skies uh, in an alien Buick. Um, it actually was a Chrysler, but, um, you know, that's something <laughs> we can't prove. <laughs> so uh, I, I actually started dancing about 20 years ago uh, doing salsa. You know, salsa is my first dance. It was my first love, still is. Um, and then salsa kind of gave way to uh, cha-cha. And cha-cha, cha-cha became my gateway dance, right? Cha-cha was my gateway into tango because, you know, cha-cha has a little bit of flair, a little bit of drama. You know, not that I dance, like, you know, with any of that. But um, <laughs> and, and actually, some of the ladies at the club said, you should try to dance tango. You will be good at tango. Mm. Really? Okay. So, um, so I listened. And where, uh, where and are we at, at this point? Are we, are we, is this in California? Um, yeah. Got it. So uh, I actually remember it was a little place in uh, Laguna Niguel called uh, the Romeo Cucina. And uh, the lady's name was Alma de Vera. And she wow. just kept <laughs> she kept telling me, you've got to go to Lom Dance. And, oh, sorry. That's a, a dance studio in Orange no, County. Please, Can I say that? Please, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. yeah, <laughs> totally. yeah. Well, hopefully they'll Yeah, it, it actually just automatically beeps anytime you name another <laughs> studio. So you don't have to worry about it. Just beeps it right out. I've been watching a lot of Black Mirror. I like it. Oh, very <laughs> cool. <laughs> so she just kept hammering on me. And then uh, one day it finally stuck. And I said, all right, we'll investigate this. So I got into tango about 10 years ago, 10, going on 11 years. I got into tango with the idea of thinking it's going to make my salsa better, you know. And, and then I, I remember going to my first tango lesson. And uh, instructor shall remain nameless, studio will remain nameless, but I remember it well. I walked in there, I'm going, yeah, I got, uh, I got 10 years of salsa under my belt. <laughs> I got <this. laughs> Did everybody in uh, internet land see Megan laugh? Because <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. This is my favorite. <laughs> it, it's, it's a it's fascinating a, often, thing. No, we, we see it all the time. And, and, and yeah, and it makes sense at a level. <laughs> if I know this dance, I probably sort of automatically know this other dance. And often it's so much harder for somebody who knows another dance really well, <laughs> like both because your expectations are higher for how fast it's going to go. Right. Yeah. You have a whole other vocabulary in your body, an entirely different way of, of moving. Um, yeah, it's great. That's what tango is so amazing that way. It's the great equalizer. Like even if you have a ton of dance and you're really great at movement and you're gifted, like you might move along a little faster the first few weeks, but then you suck like everybody else really after like month two at the most. And that was my life. I have nothing to add to that other than, you know, uh, I, 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 would, I would go to a class and uh, well, I, I remember the first class, right? And I go in there, and I'm just, I'm pretty sure I've got this. And she says, "Okay, so everybody, get your partner, get in the, you know, you're gonna do a close embrace." And I'm going, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." And then we got about to number five on the basic gate. I'm going, "Ah!" <laughs> and I'm melting down. And um, from that point on, for about six months, I went home after every lesson and wanted to slit my wrists. Mm. You know, I don't know if anybody else went through that but it's pretty bad i am i am with yep. you all the way who knew that this the, the curve was so steep and so impossible i didn't so uh i i think megan the word you used was it was the great equalizer mm. yeah. yes yes it's what so, i love about it and yes if you come from another dance it makes it worse because you know you've got your other dance going and you kind of know what's happening you walk into the club everybody knows you you know you get a little respect and people think you're okay and then you go <clears throat> right back to being a beginner and everyone thinks you suck and nobody wants to have anything to do with you and it's awful 
<laughs> so, so was there a part of you that was almost looking for that, having kind of accumulated a certain comfort level, maybe even some status in another dance? Were you looking to start over like that? What, 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 what prompted that? Wow, that is a great question. Um, so there's two answers to that, two parts to it. The first is that, like I said, um, you know, Dave, I, I honestly thought that I could, I could give my salsa some style, a little extra pizzazz if I, if I brought in a few tango techniques. I had seen people kind of tinkering with it, mm. and, and salsa performers were doing this thing where, where girls would do a little, a little tight ocho or swivel routine, Mm. And the, the instructors were all calling it, oh, this is the tango move. Put her into the tango move. And so I thought, mm. I so, I, that. so you kind of had fusion yeah. on, on the mind, even from the beginning, when you, you, you were thinking, uh, maybe I can take a little here, apply it to salsa. I did. You, you nailed it. Got it. You, and, that, and that was where I started at. Um, but, but the other thing that, that really became quickly apparent to me and I told you that there were two parts to this. So the first part was, yeah, I thought I'd pimp my salsa. You know, okay, good. And um, the second part was, I realized after a while, you know, I'd been in the salsa community a while, gray hair starts springing out, you know, and the wrinkles start showing up. I'm going, this is a young man's game, you know. <laughs> and you start looking, and all the girls are like, you know, your niece's age or your daughter's age. And they're going, oh. And it just... And you don't want to be that guy that all the girls talk about, that creepy old guy, you know, in the salsa club. So I decided tango will be my exit strategy. Mm. You know, because I went, I went to some tango classes and everybody there is mature. <laughs> Most people are a little mature. And I thought, wow, this is a great exit strategy. This I can do till I drop dead. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's the other cool thing about tango. It, it, there's, it's, you, you, it almost requires maturity and life experience, I think, to, to get into it. It's very rare for somebody. I mean, there's certainly people in the L.A. community that started when they were 17, 18, 19 years old. But it seems to be something that people are attracted to when they've been, like, kicked around a little bit <laughs> in life, you know. <laughs> have, have a few years under their belt. I, I think if you've, if you've learned a little bit about patience... Uh, that probably is a real asset mm -hmm. if you're going to go into tango. Um, you know, I, I think people who kind of have the whole Zen idea or, or practice yoga or somehow are able to balance and keep things in perspective, I think probably they're well suited for it. You know, otherwise people who are type A's and, and you know, it's just like, oh, I either do this in five minutes or I'm out of here. Uh, we, you know, look, look who I'm telling, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys already know this. Um, but I, I found that, uh, you know, I was kind of the young guy at that time, and I was feeling pretty good about that. I thought, hey, this will work for a while. And uh, it's, it's, it's kind of worked out so far, you know, except that I had to buy a whole different wardrobe for tango because the <laughs> Really? Please elaborate. Yeah. What's your salsa wardrobe? Um, <laughs> I mean, your tango wardrobe is extremely fabulous, so I'm, I'm having trouble picturing Another level of fabulousness. Another level of fabulousness. Look at Oh, my goodness. I'm going to give you this Twix bar, Megan. You have <laughs> earned uh, in lieu of in lieu of a, of a Benjamin. I'm wow. With you. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so well, you know, I, I used to, so to answer your question, uh, you know, in, in, in salsa, you'd never wear a blazer. You would never wear a jacket and a tie because you'd melt, 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 you know. I mean. Um, so I used to wear a lot of, you know, thin sorts of transparent materials, and that's probably yeah. something that needs to. <laughs> oh, they need it. We need it. It is what the world needs. <laughs> um, I'm a little bummed you're not doing the interview in a transparent shirt, quite hmm. frankly. Let me, okay, we'll transition to something a little, a little easier to digest. So, <laughs> so all the time in Salsa, I never had a pair of proper dance shoes. You know, what I do is I take my street shoes, take them to the shoe guy, have him put leather on the bottom so I could spin, 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 and life was good. So, like, I didn't get a real pair of dance shoes for maybe like the first nine months I was in tango. So I'm taking a lot of grief. Uh, you know, and I, instructors are looking at me like, hmm. And I remember the first time 
God bless their souls. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use. I'm, I I got to tell you the name so that you know who this is. So, the first lesson I ever took uh, with with uh, Miriam and Leonardo, I, I go walking in with this pair of white jazz shoes that I had right from the salsa choreography. God love their souls. You know, they were so professional. Didn't say a word, just didn't miss a beat, and okay, well, this is how we're doing it. You know, it didn't give me any grief at all. Um, I, I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, so anyway, I finally bought a pair of dance shoes, and now, uh, as you guys have seen at at, um, at Oxygen Tango, I love to come debut my new dance shoes from Colombia at the 5050 Milonga. Mm-hmm. That's that's I don't know. It's because it's daylight; you can actually see them. You know. <laughs> wow, we're so honored. I had no idea you were regularly debuting new shoes from Colombia at the Malanga. So what have I been doing? <laughs> there's there's a few picks up on uh, on Facebook. If you go way back, you'll see. I think I think there are three pairs now that I've actually debuted there. It's it's my trial run for it. It's worked out quite nicely. And then of course, <laughs> the worst part is that then you know I'm sitting there, I'm feeling pretty good. And then Sh- Sachin comes in, and he's he's that guy's got some shoes too, and the is then I'm, I'm on Facebook, right? And I'm looking at Artishir's page, and he's got these incredible these oh. yeah. hand hand painted tango shoes in different artistic genres. Is that how he does it? Yeah. Yes. So, oh. I've been killing myself going. Where do you find these? Where do you find these? You know, to, look, he's, he's been known to hand paint a pair of tango shoes at the fifty fifty Milonga. I've seen him do it. No. And then, Dave, am I remembering right? I feel like Artisher does it with Sharpies. It's not even paint, right? Is it Sharpies? I do have some memory of that, too, yeah. He has his own technique, I'm sure. Which is even more incredible. Yep. That's a sad thing. Yeah, yeah there does. was a period of time there where Artisher would come and not dance, and he would just sit and work on his shoes in this, the lobby. Is, this is testament of the magic, mystical atmosphere of the 50-50 afternoon milonga at Oxygen <laughs> Tango. See it? sort of promotes that artistic thinking you see i mean it's it's a shoe designer's epicenter of creativity <laughs> love it <laughs> well franco don nuevo i consider you you're like the susan sarandon of alternative tango nuevo tango you're constantly advocating for it um talking about why it shouldn't be so stigmatized um why what what what, what is this what's this crusade for you so uh, when I started dancing tango, um, I was I was taken into the restroom and beaten regularly by the uh, traditional tango people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sounds I, hot. <laughs> I probably earned some of it because you know I walked in, I'm going, okay, I know the basic eight. and ten years of salsa. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that's. A- yeah, that's an explosive combination. <laughs> so I, go, I go into this Sunday milonga, right? You know, and everybody's got their ties on and they're wearing their cocktail dresses. And I'm going in there going, yeah, what am I going to do here? So I throw out my basic eight, you know, and I've ocho to the end of the earth. And I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to do a dip. <laughs> Does that mean I can do? <laughs> oh my god it was it was a it was like it was like prometheus had brought fire <laughs> or kind of like bigfoot had shown up i mean take your pick <laughs> it's like the, the air just went <laughs> out of the room and uh there's, nobody told me there's no dips in tango i didn't <laughs> i just i have a vision of you being dragged out of the malanga and you're like nobody told me there's no dips <laughs> Tango. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot like that. It was even more like somebody holding me down, and then the tattoo guy saying, "Okay, red letter A, right here, big and bold, red letter A." And so I was marked. <laughs> Is but, A for adulterer? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> was it Tango Hawthorne, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, little did I. Know. Well, anyway, so. <laughs> Moving right along, um, that that was kind of my rough. You know, traditional people weren't. This is the whole problem with um, with being an with being a nuevo guy 
in a traditional world is that, you know, Nuevo kind of by def do we want to go down this road? Did I answer any questions yet? Am I? You're answering the question, I think. You're doing great. I'm just, I'm listening. I'm just checking in on the Facebook feed <laughs> and making sure that all the feeds are still up and running. <laughs> So, but, but that was my strategy when I'd had, you know, like, like six weeks of tango and 10 years of salsa, you just kind of go with what you've got. And it's like basic eight, basic eight, basic eight dip. And, you know, that was kind of my thing. And, you know, some of the women actually thought it was kind of okay, but, um, the Malanga hostess did not think it was okay. And so, uh, after two or three weeks, she makes this announcement, you know, between the class and the Milonga that. Gentlemen, there will be no dips, no dipping on the floor. <laughs> you know, little by little, I kind of got beaten down and uh, kind of got. So, so that was kind of it. But I guess I was lucky because after I'd, after I'd been in maybe two, three months taking lessons and trying to work in the milongas, I found a dance partner who, and I don't know how anybody can possibly